When you bring up hamstrings, that brings me immediately to our experiences with Run Rich Run. Did you pull your hamstring back to back years? I was 41, no training, no nothing. Right. It kicked in about 25 yards and I had another 15 yards to go. <laughs> I realized that the race was a little longer than I thought. I tried to kick it in gear. Pow. As dark as I am, the back of my hamstring was blue. Yo, yo, welcome to RG3 and the Ones of Wave Sports and Entertainment Original presented by Prize Picks. I'm your host, Robert Griffin III, and on this show, we're going to be talking to the Ones. I'm talking about the Ones at the top of their game in sports and entertainment. They don't just know the game, but they also study the game. And by the end of this show, hopefully you can take something from it that you can apply to your own life and become one of one. All right, now, listen, I'm the one who was literally racing a hawk this past week. And uh, I got the shoes to prove it, okay? I'm 3-0 versus Wildlife, 2-0 versus Tame of the Seahawk. And uh, they luckily gave me some cleats to go out there and have the right traction because the floor was a little bit wet on that turf. But we came away victorious. And today, we're going to be talking to one of the greatest ever. I'm talking about a game changer. But before we get to that, make sure you guys like and subscribe to our YouTube page. And be prepared for our shows to be dropping every single Thursday. So make sure you follow us on social media at RG3 and the Ones. Again, that's at RG3 and the Ones. Those episodes will be dropping every single Thursday. So make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube page. So again, coming up on this episode, I'm talking about a game changer. That's right. One of the legendary quarterbacks of this game, a guy that I modeled my game after. This guy was a game changer, a record setter. I mean, he should have won the Heisman, if you're asking me as a Heisman Trophy winner. I certainly would have voted for him, but certainly tore up the league as an Atlanta Falcon and also as a Philadelphia Eagle. This guy played in the NFL for 13 seasons, four-time Pro Bowler unbelievable career the most career rushing yards for a quarterback ever i'm talking about the one and the only michael vick welcome to the show my brother thanks for having me bro you inspired me man uh you know we've had our our uh our own encounters and and had some fun whether it be flag football or just talking but uh you're you're a guy that inspired the next generation of quarterbacks the guys that are really starting right now in the NFL and tearing it up. Um, and it all goes back to, like, you being able to throw a football out the dang stadium. So I just got to ask for the people, how far can you actually throw a football? Right now, about – I'm going to still give myself the benefit of the doubt and say a good 60, 62 yards. Because, you know, I, I don't really I don't really throw – yeah, I don't really throw in the off season. This this probably be the first I call it. I still call it the off season. See, my mind still conditioned like when the season's over. I still feel like there's an off season. Okay, okay. You got sixty two in there. All right. Well, what about when you were in your prime? Well, how far could you throw the football? I would say at least eighty yards. At least I threw eighty three in the game one time. Oh my goodness. Uh, Virginia Tech versus Boston College. Right, it was I'm the game sure to go to the national championship. Like if we won, then we we go on to the national championship. So it it was a day, and uh, I caught Andre Davis there on the left side on the go route. Man, I I, I was a little late. I hitched twice. And you know you, that extra hitch, you got to throw it a little further. Hitched into it, and then you know I, I let it go. So the fact that you remember, you still remember that play is uh, amazing to me. But I think everybody wants to really know, like, what are you doing now in retirement? Like, is there anything that you're doing with your foundation, uh, mentoring guys? Like, what what's Mike Vick up to yeah, these days? Um, ha- enjoy a post, you know, post uh, plan. Um, you know, you, we never know what it's going to be like uh, when we retire. So, you know, of course, I uh, fell into the analyst role True. working for Fox Sports and enjoying that. Uh, work with a great group of people over there, and and Carissa and Charles and and Jules just joined and um, having fun with that man. Just uh, just launched the Achieving Victory Foundation, which will be catering towards you know youth youth development, um, community outreach, uh, all sorts right. of reform. You know, prison reform, juvenile reform, and uh, you know animal welfare. So the, you know, combining all those three, and then. I'm excited to announce that, you know, we'll be making an announcement real soon that the uh, the Victory Apparel line will be relaunching next year. We're we'll bringing the shoe with it, RG throw. So okay. it's about to be crazy. You're bringing, bringing the shoe, the with, shoe it? with it? I'm bringing the shoe with it. 
Oh, I'm gonna send it to you. I'm gonna send you a prototype when it's done, so you can uh, do a little little marketing for me. Hey, I got you, dog. Hey, you send me something free. Hey, that's for me. I'm gonna make sure I rock it for you now. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. You know how we do. It's all love. So when you talk about doing all these things for your foundation, uh, the thing that comes to mind for me is just the fact that uh, you were super influential in your career, right? And when you were a young player, did you understand how influential you were with some of the decisions that you were making and some of the mistakes that you made on and off the field? Uh, or did it take some time for that to truly kick in for you? Yeah, RG, that, that's a good question, bro, because I did. I didn't understand, you know, my role, you know, to the next generation at the time. And I, I, I really feel if I would have paid attention to that, been more cognitive of what where I was in my life, I would have took the, the, the meaning of role model way more serious. Because, you know, now it's, it's young guys like yourself and Cam Newton and Deshaun Watson and, you know, all yeah. these young quarterbacks, you know, black, white, and different, that's, I'm going to be like, bro, you know what I mean? That's big, bro. You know, and so, <laughs> you know, decision making is, is really important. And, uh, you know, I wish I had somebody at the time. And I probably did. That's the crazy part. I probably had a couple of people telling me, like, man, you got to do this. I know I did. Uh, you know, I take, I know I did. And so, in hindsight, if, if I could do it all over again, I would have took that part of my life super serious. So serious. So, when you look at, the guys that you mentioned, myself, Cam, like we're out of the league, but there's guys like Lamar Jackson who are in the league. Um, do you take that into your mentorship of guys knowing what you had going on and what you did and the mistakes you made and and trying to like pay that forward? And do you mentor yeah, any guys? Yeah, I'm, I mentor a lot of guys. A lot of guys around the league got my phone number. I spent a lot of time with, you know, Jalen and Dak this offseason, just, you know, just catching up and, you know, doing some stuff in terms of, you know, talking about, you know, the quarterback position, you know, black quarterbacks as we stand, you know, got a project coming out next year that's going to be airing, you know, via Amazon. So proud of that. Um, but, you know, just catching up, man, and always leaving that that door open to to have discussions because it's not easy. We, you know, we got to do a lot more. You know what I'm saying? We always got to show up and show up and, and, and especially the way we play the game. Like we dual threats, and so we prone to injury. So we just got to be more accountable and accessible because you know we put ourselves in a lot of harm's way. So for guys like Lamar, Jalen, Dak, Patrick, these guys who I know idolize me, you appreciate you including me in that. Our first time meeting, we ran into each other at Chantilly. Right. You know, obviously, great conversation, introduction, and then that season, I end up going to IR. And so y'all smacked us twice. And the second time y'all came to Philly and beat us. And, you know, I'm in awe watching you, of course. I'm paying attention because I know you, you in the division now. And I know what I'm going to be facing next year if I'm coming back. I come back, Chip Kelly's the coach. Um, but after the game, after you beat us at home, uh, your rookie year, he was like, man, you know, we talked. And he was like, I wish you was out there today. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, me too. But, like. What does that mean? Like, did you do you really want to go head? You ready to go head to head? Now? And I'm coming off, so I kind of took it in a way. It was, it was. A, I felt like it was a competitive thought. Okay, okay, okay. And so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna have to see young boy next year, <laughs> and, and we we get y'all first game of the season. Yep. And I never forgot what you said, I, and I kind of I used that to fuel my fire. Like, okay, bro was like he was like, and I and I can see your young gun wanting to, you know. Outside, you know, big bro, whatever. And man, I, I had to, I had to, I had to do it to you. Yeah, you did it. You did it. I had it. to get it to you. I had to get it to <laughs> you. you. Did. you it, did. it was a good game. I never forget this though, and it was great competition. Uh, I was talking to London Fletcher. Okay. And you know, Chip, we was coming in with that new offense, and we was more, and like it was fast paced. Yep. I knew we was gonna beat y'all because London was like, man. We got to face that first. <laughs> and right then and there, I was like, we got the edge. Yep. You know, I remember you came out, you stuck the flag in the ground. I said, oh, I got to bring my A game. <laughs> Thank God I did because it was a good game. Nah, it, was, it, it game. was a good game. And you guys got up on us big. We we, tried, we came back near the end of the game, tried to yeah. make it a game. And, yeah. and to be quite frank, I threw a pick at the end of the game that ended it. But, um, nah, the, the, the game my rookie year, 
it wasn't a it wasn't in a sense of I wish you was out there so I could get after you. It was yeah. it was more yeah, yeah. it was more of a I wanted to be able to say that I got the chance to compete against Michael Vick. And I didn't know I didn't know if you were going to be back the next year or what was going to be happening. Yeah, yeah. But that's a yeah. that's a small example of like how we as athletes can take things yeah. not not the wrong way but yeah. like use them to fuel our fire. Right, right. The, you know what I'm saying? Us. Yeah. Yeah, the help was we 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 kind of I mean, if you're not looking for a way to knock off cuz look, you got to uh, fiduciary responsibility to your organization, sure. and I do too. And that's the win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's for us. It, help, it helps our brand. It helps the organization. So we got to find this game so hard. We got to find whatever edge we can find. Bro. Exactly. You know that. Exactly. You know how that goes. I know exactly how that goes. RG3 in the Ones is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. We making bank, y'all. It's as simple as this you just select two or more players. Pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry. Bow! Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. That's big time now. If you have a player who exits the game in the first half of a football game and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. That's huge. Prize Picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entries in less than 60 seconds. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. All right, let's get into it. This week's Prize Pick selections for me are going to start with James Cook, the running back from the Buffalo Bills. Just ran for 179 yards against the Dallas Cowboys. I don't think he's going to get that many yards, but I'm going to have him at more then 72 and a half rushing yards going up against the Los Angeles Chargers, who just so happened to be 18th in the NFL, giving up 113 yards per game on the ground. So I think he's going to get more. My next selection is going to be Amon Ross St. Brown for the Detroit Lions. He just had over 100 yards receiving last week. And this week he's going up against a Minnesota Vikings pass defense that is 32nd in the league in completion percentage. Now, why is that important? It's because of the run after the catch. Yards after catch for Amon Ross St. Brown is a huge part of his game. So I'm going to say he's going to have more than 81 and a half yards this week against the Vikings. So those are my picks. Daily Fantasy Sports is made easy with prize picks. So go to prizepicks.com slash RG3 and use code RG3 for a first deposit match of up to $100. What? Like I said, go to prizepicks.com slash RG3 and use code RG3 for a first deposit match of up to $100. You better take that deal now. Listen, I can't have Michael Vick on and not have the conversation about what our guy Cam Newton said about game changers versus game managers. Now, I got to preface it with anybody out there that, that, had, that disagreed with what Cam said about Brock Purdy and Dak Prescott and Jerry Goff and Tua Tunga Vailoa, that's fine. You can disagree with Cam, but you can't discredit the man, right? MVP, Heisman Trophy winner, uh, Super Bowl, took his team to Super Bowl, most rushing touchdowns in NFL history for a quarterback. Like, that's untouchable. He's earned the right to give his take on whatever football, you know, quarterback takes he wants to, all right? But for you... When you look at what he said, what was your biggest takeaway from the game manager versus the game changer? You know, we use that 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 sense of the word game manager or words. Yep. You know, we kind of throw it out there at, at certain times for certain for certain people, and, and and rightfully so. Um, you know, Cam got a, a, a amazing football acumen. Yes. And I and I respect you know. You know, his salviness, I respect everything he ever did for the game. Or Cam was a game changer. Yes, you know was. what I'm saying? He was like us. Shit, like, continue to transcend the game. Like, he gave he give kids a reason to believe. He also give you a reason to believe things that, that he said. Correct. Um, for for the right reasons. And But when it comes to game manager and game changer, it, it, it's, a, it's a difference. Like, you can look around the league and you can see – the New York Jets needed a game manager. Yes. You know, not necessarily a game changer. And so, you know, you look at the quarterbacks like Brock, Dak, sometimes you're in a position where you all you got to do is just manage the game. And there's going to be times where you got to make a game change and play, whether it's pass or, or run. 
however that looks or however it happened, you know, as long as it happened, that's that's all that matters. So, you know, I think, you know, we get it misconstrued because of some of these guys are in great systems. You know what I'm saying? And Brock Purdy's in a great system that allow him to just make a couple plays, make maybe like seven or eight plays in the game, and then, you know, it might just be throwing a screen to, you know, to Debo or Ayuk and – I don't know if that's managing the game or if that's making a game change in play. As long as the plays get made, I kind of overlook it because um, <laughs> it's times where I wish I would just manage the game, bro. There you go. Like, instead of trying to be the game changer, third and, third and 11, you got that deep dig, you got a post, you got a deep comeback. It's not there. I try to take off and run. Sometimes you got to play the percentages. Right. Throw it, throw the six yard, you know, back, throw it to the back in the flat. He might get 10, 11. He might get four or five, but you increase that position to change the field for, you know, for the, you know, for the punt return, for the punt return or for special teams. Right. Cause field position matter. Yeah. At, at times. So I don't know if that's managing the game or, <laughs> but sometimes I wish I would have did that. Completion percentage would have been up a little right. bit. You know, might have pushed the you know opposition a little deeper, you know, with the punt return and might have got better field position. But man, I, I mean, I like hearing things like that because now you know, so maybe, maybe guys have changed their game. Yeah, I think it's it's uh we have misconstrued what it means to be a game manager. And Cam kind of went into yeah. this in his in his explanation after the fact about how Tom Brady managed the game, Peyton Manning managed the game, Drew Brees managed the game. Now, were yeah. they game changers in the way that they approached the pre-snap process and the post-snap process yeah. of getting the ball to the right place at the right times? Yes, they were in that aspect, but they had mastered the art of simply managing the game and – I, yeah. I, I, the question I would say ask to you is, do you think Brock Purdy is a game manager? No. No, I, I've seen Brock Purdy maneuver the pocket at times yeah. and make some plays on the run or pull it down and on third and six, third and seven, and make a play. That's not managing. Yeah, that's changing. I agree. You know, that's changing the down the distance. That's changing the outcome. You give your defense a chance to rest. That's That's respect. Yeah. You get the, you get the respect at the quarterback position yes. when you when you do things like that, and then uh, you know it, it, a lot of things he do is on time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he, you know, when he's setting up in the pocket, coming off play action, is you know one, two, three. Yep. You know, ball coming out, and we know when it don't look like right. <laughs> you taking sacks and the ball is just going because we see it on a weekly basis. Right. A lot of guys look like they don't know what they're doing. Right. And 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 it might not be that they don't know what they're doing. It's like when you in the moment, you got to make that play. You know what I'm saying? Whether you, like I said, game manager, game changer, you're going to have to do all that in 60 minutes. 100%. So I agree with you. I don't think that Brock Purdy is a game manager. I think he is a game changer. And the yeah. difference between, say, the 2019 49ers, who were doing similar things to what this 49ers team is doing this year, it is Brock Purdy. Because yeah. Jimmy – was a, a game manager. He was going to get it to where it's supposed to be, but if right. it wasn't there, right. like it, it is what it yeah. is. Like, can't play, yeah, play yeah. So, so exactly. So, so Jimmy, yeah, that's, that's a great point. And Jimmy game, it, like you would look at him and be like, Jimmy, that's all I need to do. Is, you know, don't turn it over, check it down, a big play here and there. So, I mean, I like that Cam raised this conversation right. because it's going to be had amongst them in a lot of locker rooms or, in a lot of quarterback rooms, like, what are you? Exactly. What are you? And, and, what you going to be? And I agree. I think a game changer has to know how to manage the game. But like you brought up, uh, it's a balance. Michael Parsons actually brought yeah. this up as well, which I thought was interesting to hear from a defensive guy. You know, you can't just yeah. constantly be out on the football field trying to make game-changing plays at the quarterback position. No. Because as you said, uh -huh. if it's third and 11, bro, you yeah. sometimes you got to throw the check down. I, I had this conversation yeah, with, with Mike Shanahan uh, after my rookie year. They would call quarterback draw on third and 16. And I'm like, coach, do you want me to get the 16 yards? Or like, yeah, do you want me to slide? Yeah. You, you want yeah. me to like run somebody yeah. over? What, what am I and doing here? Because if I go get the 16, yeah. I'm going to take a hit. And I took a lot of hits that my, my rookie year because I didn't quite understand like, hey, Rob, we, yeah. we just trying to – 
protect the football and get as much as we can to keep you safe. Right, but I needed right. to hear that from the coach because otherwise I'm thinking, yeah. bro, I'm trying to make a yeah. game changing play. I'm trying to get all them yards. Right, right, right. See, see, and that's the way it can get. We need our coaches to kind of, you know what I'm saying? They got, they kind of, they got to manage us too. You know what I mean? Right. They got to police what we do right. to make sure, like, look, I'm calling this. That's a conversation. I'm calling this. So if it's not there, check it down. Let's try to try to, you know, manage the field position and not, because if I can drop back and it's, and it's not just about running either. Right. Sometimes I try to, I try to throw that poster. I try to throw that go route. Or I right. try to throw that that deep end cut into a cover two, dropping backers. You know all that. You know all that's going on back there, trying to make a game change in play. <laughs> exactly. So the crowd can go wild, and we keep the tent. But sometimes that's not the play, man. Right. So I think this is a good, invaluable lesson for a lot of up and young, young up and coming quarterbacks to say, um, you know, what am I? What am I going to be? You know, it's our, it's our job to teach the next generation how to play the game, man. So, uh, you know, shout out to Cam. Like I said, I respect Cam quarterback acumen. Cam, his his stats up there with ours, man, like what he done did. You know what 100%. I mean? Like in terms of just in the record books. Yeah, in the record books it goes Cam, you, and then I'm way down there. But you get my point, I, and I get your point as well. Yeah, like, yeah but it, it's funny because I, I, I look at us like – um. Players like, you know, as we came in, we like all created that balance for continuing to pass the torch. Like after after me, it was like you and him and then Russ came. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, OK, we keeping this thing going on. We keeping the train going because it was rough for me in the beginning as far as, you know, how the type of game I wanted to I was going to play how I should play it, you know, and validation for, you know, just being a dual threat. Like, I needed that. I took, you know, I took a lot of heat from the media as far as, um, you know, what type of quarterback should I try to develop into. I remember it. So, yeah. I remember it. It was a little rough. I remember it vividly, Mike, because, um, like I said, like, I grew up, uh, I'm 33. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you're, you're, yeah. you're 10 years older than I am. You're a guy that, like I said, really influenced my style, guys like Lamar, even Cam, you know what I'm saying? And I remember vividly the media would always say, Mike can't, Mike can't throw it. And, like, right when they would say, Mike can't throw it, you would come out and throw for 350. And, and like, how did you manage that part of your game as a young quarterback to, to not always be so um, – reactive to the media, but also still being the best player you could be. Yeah, because I was being reactive to the media. Like, every time I would go out and have a good passing game, I'm like, I can't wait to get to that post. <laughs> 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 like, I, I come, man, I barely I had one shoe on and one shoe off. <laughs> you know what I mean? Paying sag and trying to get to that post. Right. Man, you know, if it was, you know, 10 years later and I matured a little bit, I'd be a little more diligent getting to that podium and take my time and gather my thoughts and, and say, you know, try to not always be politically correct, but, you know, say what needs to be said, because I know it's a lot of young young men listening. Um, so, you know, I, I had good conversations with Dan Reeves, and then when uh, the West Coast system was introduced in, in Atlanta, um, I was really appreciative of that, because now when I look back, I learned so much about football. Dan was teaching me a lot of what he had taught Elway, and I was pretty much running what Elway ran, okay. you know, in the 80s, 90s, and then... Yep. Chris Chandler. So it was it was like a, a, a Super Bowl driven formula within the offense and, and then he was adding, you know, add my little dual threat stuff, you know, the, the all the QB runs yeah, yeah. that just kinda like help change the way defense was playing in us. But I wasn't you know, I it don't look crystal clear. It don't look like what everybody else doing. You pulling it down, running on two plays, and then you passing the two plays. Right. And then it hurts your accuracy because you're getting hit and you tired and so, you know, now I'm taking heat about, you know, this guy to be one way, you know, one side and you need to play the pocket. And then it's, it was just all about balancing it out. I feel you. And so West Coast System taught me that. Had good conversations with coaches like Greg Knapp, Jim Moore, on how to transition to be a passer. And and, and so it, I, I just grew with it. I feel you. Yeah. And, and like, I think, like, to your point, for the young guys out there, sometimes being a game changer means knowing when to manage the game. And I, and I think that's the best way to put it. So for you, Mike, you're a game changer, 100%. What was prime Vic? Because we always hear this like, hey, Michael Vick in his prime. For you, what was prime Vic? What was that 
year or two years for you in the NFL? Yeah. I think Prime um Mike was uh probably two thousand four, man. My yeah. first year in the West Coast system because me and Greg Knapp, rest in peace, Greg Knapp, worked so hard on a day to day basis. He poured into me every day, man. He used to call me Super. That was my that was my nickname, <laughs> Super. And you know, I you know, I always said, Hey Super, how you feeling about this? Or, you understanding this and he, every day was a work day. We worked extremely hard and when I look back, I respect the work ethic and what it took to get to an NFC Championship game that year. The only caveat is that it was so easy to get there. I thought that we would get back the next year and the following year. And so, you know, me and Greg time together, I, I started to think I, I had it. Coach, I got it. When it probably needed to be some more, you know, detailed discussed and some more time put in like the first year. And, and Coach kind of was trying to let me grow, too, as a man, and, and so a young man. And so, um, you know, I kind of started started to not do the things that I did that first year. So I felt like the first year in the system, 04, was prime, man. I, you know, I had my shoe. The Vic 2 had just dropped. Nope. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was fire. It, yeah, it was, it was big things happening. So you know, I was having a good time, man, and uh, certainly, uh, you know, more proud of my teammates at the time. They was pushing me real hard. We was pushing each other. No, that's awesome. And uh, I remember that year vividly, obviously. I was 14 years old at the time. Everybody was rocking the, the Mike Vick shoe. Um, yeah. You know, you're the one that really got football players the ability to get their own shoe. So uh, appreciate you yeah. for doing that. Yeah. Um, no doubt. But when you look at the game today, who who is playing the closest to prime Vick? It's Lamar hands down, man. And I know you spent a lot of time with Lamar. I know you was a part of that growth process. You, J. Irv, you know what yep. I'm saying? Like, they had a room to have, you know, that veteran experience in the room, a guy that's speaking and you can relate to. Right. And he he went through a lot of things that, man, that that's 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 big. That's invaluable. You can't get that. And, and so, now, y'all adding to that and watching him now grow into, you know, a, a, a pure passer, of the football, managing the game, and changing the game. Like, come on. He ain't, no, I ain't just pulling it down and running every chance he get or trying to make a big play. He checking it down in the flat, and, and it's like, this, you know, this, this is what it's supposed to look like. So, you know, I feel like Lamar is, is, is certainly the closest to, like, prime, you know, to prime Vic. Everybody, and everybody else is, like, doing a really, really good job, you know, in, in terms of, you know, handling the offense, handling the pressure, handling the media, because it's not easy playing quarterback, y'all. It's really not. So I think you got to respect all 32 guys who who, who, who put it, suit it up and, and go out there and, and give it their all because, man, you know, RG, you, you can always enlighten them on, on your platform that this is not an easy position. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really not an easy position. And I agree with you with Lamar. Like, his stats are down as far as like touchdown passes and maybe yards from like his MVP year in 2019. But you, you are 100% correct. He is managing the game so much better than he was in the past. Uh, Cause I've seen him make some, some crazy plays. Like he had that spin move against the Bengals last Uh, week. I mean, last week and also he had the spin move uh, years ago that uh, I'm like, bro, I was on the sideline, this run he had, I think it was 2019 against the Bengals. And he did a spin move like thirty yards down the field, and then ran it for a touchdown. Yeah, and I'm on. I'm on the yeah, sideline, and 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 I made some crazy plays, bro. You done made some crazy plays. I yeah. ain't never seen a play like that before. My jaw was yeah. on the ground, <laughs> especially I'm, when you see it right there in live. I'm like, bro, what is what is really going on? What did what did he just do? That type of special. Exactly. The people kind of knew. Like, I wish people the fan experience would. If it was a fan experience to go on the sideline and just. Feel that intensity, you know, from the defense, uh, what offensive players got to go through and how we got to face these guys who are like, you know, um, some of the probably best athletes in the world at their positions respectively, size, you know what I'm saying? You know, 6'3", 255 pound linebackers that can go sideline to sideline. That's a different type of pressure, you know, that we we face. And so to be able to do moves like that, you know, with all that pursuit, Man, people have a newfound respect for, you know, just football players in general, especially offensive players. I'm always be offensive biased. 
never take nothing away from a defensive player because it's, it's, it's really physical and, and, and the mental aspect play a part. But, man, they have respect for what we go through as offensive players. If they've seen it right then, if they could go on the field and actually witness 100%. it. 100 percent. And you talk about that physicality of the game. Um in your own experience in the NFL and what you've seen since you've been out, do you feel like dual threat quarterbacks are refed differently when it comes to hits in and outside the pocket? Yeah, I think I think at, at times, yeah, because you know, you, from a ref's perspective, you got to look at it and man, I don't know if he was about to make a move to get out the pocket or if he if he. I I, I went through that too, as far as uh, not getting calls sometimes, and, and then when I think back, I think respectively, I got my fair share of calls like it. I don't think it was a game where I got or can't remember a game where I got beat up and it was like the refs won't make no calls. Right. I got beat up in the pocket. Um, so, yeah, I think it's tough on the refs. You know, we got to get them credit for trying, man. And, uh, you know, I, I do think sometimes these calls do affect the outcome of games. Right. I, I know it's difficult, but some of these um, rough in the past are calls. And now, you know, I'm going to vouch for the defense on this. Right. You know what I'm saying? Be a little ill-advised, man. Like, like, you can't call that. And not in the heat of the battle. This man going full speed, too. Right. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I I, I hate that it affect the team. Right. Because the team puts so much into it. And defensive players, they, man, they taught to go just as hard as us. So, you know, I think we'll always be looking for that balance. You know, for with the integ- for the integrity of the pocket. I'm with you. You know, what I'm saying what's happening in the pocket. I'm with you. No, I, I definitely agree. I think that uh, when it comes to defensive guys, it's become so hard to play football now uh, with everything that's yeah. going on and all the the protections that Good. are in place. You know what I'm saying? Like for us as quarterbacks, it's like, all right, you I wish, can't. You, I wish this was like that a couple of years yeah, ago. You can't, you can't hit him across the middle. Sure, I'll throw it across the middle. And, right. and Tom Brady's right, talked about right. how quarterbacks are like throwing their guys into trouble. And I don't disagree with that. Yeah. But with the way the rules are, you can do that. But I want to get to a, another conversation with you because we talked about Prime Vic, but but right now, if uh, if the Philadelphia Eagles. Something happened to Jalen Hurts, and they needed you to come in and give them five games. Could you do it? Man, I mean, right now, it's hard to say. I, I don't think I could do it. Oh, okay, okay. No, nah, I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't do it because, um, look, the arm is never – you're going to always be able to throw a football. Very true, very true. I just feel like it's going to be a moment where I'm going to want to kick in that gear, and I'm not going to be in shape. So I'm, <laughs> as opposed to giving them five games, I'm going to give them two. Because I know that hamstring going to pop. Blat out. She going to go. She going to go. And then, you know, it's going to be back to the same old. And, you know, we the media now. Right, you know? right. So I'm going to have to respect the media because they're going to be like, you know, he's the same old Mike he was. Give you a couple good moments and then he's going to go be on IR into reserve. <laughs> So, you know, that was my MO, man. If I could have stayed healthier, I'd have had a, I missed a lot of games. I probably had a lot of opportunities to win more games and probably uh compete in the championship. You talk about being injured, you know, I I I basically lost three two three seasons because of injury, tore my ACL, of course, yeah. broke my shoulder, broke my ankle. So yeah. I'm with you. I completely understand it from that standpoint. But when you Bro, but yeah. when you bring up hamstrings, that breaks me immediately to our experiences with Run Rich Run uh, and running those mornings <laughs> for, for, for charity. Now, Mike, I got I to gotta say. I was going to mention I that. I got to say, they had me. I only did this one time, and I ran. Yeah. They said I ran a 4-4-8. Mike, I didn't run 4-4-8. I ran a 4-2-5. And they said because I ran so fast, they had to go back and watch the tape and try to get like a, a automatic time off of the tape, yeah. which which is wrong. Wow. Listen, if if the clock wow. said I ran four two five, I ran four two five. That's just it is what it yeah. is. But yeah. for you, when you were running, uh, I think is what back to back years. Uh, <laughs> did you pull your hamstring back to back years? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sadly to say, that first year I pulled my hamstring. <laughs> you know, I mean the thing was this, you know. Like I told you, that gear gonna kick in. Right. I'm gonna kick. It's gonna kick in, and I'm gonna be like, pew. And <laughs> um, you know, I I, tried, I was 41, and I was like, I, ain't, I I was like running down the block like for like 15 minutes, right. throwing away the vest, no training, no nothing. Right. I'm like, when it kick in, I'm gonna go. 
bro, when I got, when I shot out the block and it kicked in about 25 yards, that I had another 15 yards to go, <laughs> I realized that the race was a little longer than I thought, you know, from 25 years ago. And I tried to kick it in, I tried to kick it in gear. Pow. Oh my goodness. And but look, I ran a I ran a four, I ran a four seven six. Correct. But I, but the last 15 yards, my hamstring was was blown. Cause I couldn't slow down. So I was trying to like slow down. Okay. So as I'm, you know, so they still clock me, but man, when I say the back of my head. Man, bro, as dark as I am, the back of my hand saying this. <laughs> blue. It was blue, bro. Like, I mean, I, I was like, I was basically like, I got to get some treatment, some real treatment. Oh, for real? Because I, I might lose my leg. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at my, I ain't never seen my leg like that. But you th think about when we blew our hamstrings back then. I pulled a hamstring, you get the right, you know, you get the right medical attention. Correct. So I, now, you know, I'm in no man's land. I'm, I'm retired. I ain't got nobody to call. I had to call my man from Kansas City that was in Philadelphia with me, Rick. I had to call Rick. Rick <laughs> Oh my god! You know how you know how dark. I had to call him. What should I do? You know how you know how bad you have to pull your hamstring to be black and to see that it's blue like that. You gotta really, really pull the hamstring. Hey, RG. It. I, I, don't, I don't know what happened. Now I healed in like a month. It was like a month and a okay. half. And I and I pretty much healed on my own. I healed myself. Like you know, I was I was contrasting. I was icing it in the morning. You know, what I'm saying heat pad at night. Like I had to really take care okay. of me because I was I was afraid. Like because you know I, I'm not seeing a you know a, getting medical assistance every day. So I'm really worried about my leg, bro. <laughs> so the next year when you came in and ran a four right, two, right, right. I was like, I'm just coaching. <laughs> and guess what I ran? I ran a four seven. Two the first year, I ran a four seven three. The second year, just coasting. oh my gosh! <laughs> so you know, I mean, you know, with some training, I probably can get that to a four five nine. I think you could, and probably can get. I think you could. You probably can get an Eagles. Uh, you probably can get an Eagles two games. Okay, all right. So you get an Eagles two games now. We, but Jalen got that. Oh, he definitely. Oh, he definitely got that. Like as long as Jalen's healthy, he it, like he that's the, the deal. I'm just saying, yeah. if something was to happen, well, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Could give sure, two sure. games in the playoffs. Yeah. Let's let it make it happen. But when you talk about injuries and yeah. you talk about the recovery from those injuries, uh, a guy that you know, obviously, I, I would say I looked up to, but you played against kinda. And Ocho Cinco said that he used to rub his injuries in his teammates' urine to try to help them recover. <laughs> now I ain't never heard of nothing like that before. But would you do that? And, I mean, if. If it was gonna get me back on the field a little quicker, I might, <laughs> I might just put it in the bag and put a towel around it. Heat warm it up. Heat it up, warm it up. Yeah, hey, you know, somebody's that's somebody's old school remedy. It is somebody's old school remedy. I seen worse in boxing. I probably wouldn't go that far, but listen, there's guys willing to do a lot of other different things to stay on the field and get better. So oh, that doesn't shock me. Exactly. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. All right, people, it's the holiday season, and we're going to try to keep it real cozy. And nothing beats a nice, warm bubble bath to unwind and relax after fighting the cold weather all day. Yeah, just go ahead and make it bigger. <laughs> Eyes are struggling. I'm like, nah. All right, people, it's the holiday season, and we're trying to keep it real cozy. And nothing beats a nice, warm bubble bath to unwind and relax after fighting that cold weather all day long. So this week's episode of RG3 and the Ones is sponsored by Dr. Teal's. Dr. Teal's Epsom salts is trusted by the pros, a.k.a. your boy, who push their body to the limit. After a long day of hanging out with the goats and the game changers, of course, I need some me time because I can't be one of the ones without recharging my body, mind, and soul, and I use this all the time. Self-care and recovery is important, especially if you're an athlete. And if you're partying a little too hard at some of those holiday parties. So soaking in Dr. Till's Epsom salts can recharge your muscles and help speed recovery. That sounds like the perfect Christmas gift to me. It's time to work hard and recover just like the pros do. Grab Dr. Till's Epsom salts at Walmart today and elevate your game. You talked about the Eagles. You being able to give the Eagles two games if they needed you. I really wanted to have this conversation with you, though, about about Cam. Because I feel like it's a travesty that Cam is not in the NFL. 
Uh, we got guys yeah. like Trevor Simeon out there playing for the Jets. Uh, Tim Boyle was out there playing for the Jets. You know, P.J. Walker has bounced around a little bit as a backup quarterback yeah. playing for the Browns. And, and the reason I feel that way is not because if Cam came back and played right now that he would be 2015 Cam that was the MVP and, and, and yeah. went to the Super Bowl. But it's, it's around this Joe Flacco thing. Right. Joe Flacco over the past few years has not been Joe Flacco, the Super Bowl MVP. Right. right but he right. continues to get opportunities. And the reason is because of what he did in the past. Right. So if you bring in a guy like Cam, the locker room is immediately going to respect him. The locker room ain't worried right. about Cam Newton from New England. They're not worried about Cam yeah. Newton uh, from his second stint in Carolina. When you think Cam Newton. Correct. You think MVP Cam Newton. That, to me, makes the locker room feel like they have a chance. And when Joe Flacco yeah. went to Cleveland and he steps out there, he threw three interceptions this past week, and it didn't matter. They still believed they could get it done because they had Joe Flacco at quarterback, a guy who's been there right. and a guy who's done it. I think that sometimes quarterbacks that are highly drafted, like a Cam, um, they don't get those opportunities as often as some other backups because they think they might be a distraction or whatever. But I think that they're, they're yeah. holding their team back, though. Like, your team would be yeah. inherently better if Cam Newton was your backup quarterback, let alone he's good enough to be a starter with all the backup quarterbacks that we've seen play this year. Yeah. What is your feeling about that, about Cam and guys like Cam, that should still be playing, but don't get the opportunities for whatever reason. Yeah, first off, I feel like if Cam really wanted to play, Cam would be campaigning himself. We know Cam. Cam can he, he he's going to show up, and Cam is his personality will show that he wants to be back into the game. He's been real quiet. Um, I ain't spoke to Bro in a while. Um, you know, we did some stuff last summer together. And we really didn't talk about football. Cam was really – it felt like he was satisfied with where he was at now. I do think the New York Jets, and I didn't even think about that, could have used Cam. I would have gave Cam a call. Cam, how you feeling? Are you healthy? Like, only Cam know if he got that call to his representatives. So if, if they could have brought Cam in and put pressure on Zach, right. you see what I'm right. saying? Because you, you got to have somebody behind you to make you play 1, better. One thousand percent. And and so I, I feel like that could have been a possibility. I feel like Joe Flacco got his his opportunity because uh, you know he still got a strong arm. Yep. And I and I forget he was with the Jets last year. <laughs> he was. So the Jets should have been called Flacco. Should have been called. Him. Look at what he do. <laughs> See, these are type of decisions that when it all come together and people looking at it, it's like the evaluation process. So you could have did this. You could and people lose jobs. You got to be real diligent in how you go about. Um, I think all these, a lot of these administrations, how they handle their business, yep. man. Then you, you still, you still want to play right? uh, one one hundred percent. First of all, let me say this. Let me say this. This flag game we played last year. <laughs> no, that was this year. This, that was past, this past year. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, you ran past me. I tried to get your flag, <laughs> and you ran past me so fast one time. It's on audio. You heard me say. Hey, bro, need to be playing. <laughs> I don't know what's going on or why you ain't. I, and I look, I know you do, you're you an amazing analyst. Appreciate that, brother. You know what I'm saying? Very articulate, come across really, really well on a consistent basis. But, bro, <laughs> you should be playing. I appreciate that. If you want to play. I appreciate that. You should come back. Uh, I'm going to make sure you, I'm going to make sure you, um, come on, bro, get back. I mean, let me ask you this. How you feel about where you at? Is it? You know, when you watch the game and then having the chance to take some time off and you still you're only thirty three years old. You got a lot left in the tank right. and obviously you can bring that leadership right, you know, skill to the table. And that's big in locker rooms, man. These people gotta understand right. you got to have a fair share of leaders. How you feel about, you know, you know, obviously being an analyst, having a yeah. great opportunity to work for your network, but you know, have, still knowing that you can still play the game. Yeah, I mean, you're right, Mike. Uh, I'll definitely want to still play. I'm 33, and I'm not afraid to voice that. I feel like a lot of guys in my situation uh, would be afraid to kind of put themselves out on a limb and say that they still want to play, uh, whether it be ego or pride or whatever it may be. But I'm not afraid to do that. Yeah. Listen, I just raced right. the Seahawks, team of the Seahawks from the Seattle Seahawks live mascot. 
I heard yeah, about I ran that. a 40 against him and beat him last year, a little controversy. So I raced him again this year and, uh, and roasted that bird. And after the race, they actually showed it on the big board at the stadium. So Nick Sirianni yeah. in pregame comes over to me after the race, maybe like 30, 40 minutes after uh, it had aired on, on TV. And he said, he walked over to me, said, man, I didn't know you still could go. And I think there's like a yeah. little bit of a misconception in coaching circles about whether I'm healthy or whether I can play yeah. or, or anything like that. So I'm here to let, you know, set the record straight. Yes, I still want to play. Yes, I still train. Okay. I still throw the football. So when I played in that flag game uh, with you, listen, man, I've been training four days a week. Like yeah. I'm not just rolling yeah. out there and like running fast and throwing far for no reason. Right. right, um, right. So I think my passion – yeah, for the game, I love the game. When I call games, bro, it sometimes it hurts me because I'm watching these games and I'm like, I know I can still go out there and get it done. Yeah. And my experience with Lamar, yeah. I think, has made me willing to uh, accept the role of a backup because I, I was able to be for Lamar what I didn't have in my NFL career. So right. I enjoyed that part right. of it. Do I want to play and do I want to start? Yeah. If a team called me in the next couple of weeks and they need me for a playoff push, am I there? Yeah, I'm there. But I do enjoy oh, with what, what I've been doing with ESPN. They've been very great. They allow me to have a clause right. in my contract that if I do get a call, I can go and still come back right. and do my thing. So I appreciate you yeah. asking that. Man, but cool. at the same time, uh, it's nah. got to be the right situation. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, at 33, yeah. it can't be any it can't, it can't be. It can't be do. No disrespect. It can't be New England calling right now because they need you to finish out. Exactly. <laughs> oh, with all due, with all due like... respect, Coach Belichick, it can't be that one, you know. And, <laughs> and I know sometimes yeah, people but... will say beggars can't be choosers, but I don't think that I'm in a begging situation. I'm more so in a, right, in a situation right, yeah. where I'm having fun. I'm, I'm enjoying my family. I'm enjoying TV, but I still want to play. Right. Or if it was like six or seven weeks ago. Oh, yes. You see what I'm saying? Oh, yes. where, you can, where you can build a resume and then – it might be an opportunity to get signed back the, the, the following year. You know, so I, I think you you stay on stay the course on that. Uh I think um, you know, you you got this platform in the web with thought. You still got, you know, the physical ability, right. the mental right. ability to go out, man, and be and still be what you gonna be, a game manager <laughs> or a game changer. Listen, listen. <laughs> I'm gonna be a game changer that knows how to manage the game. You you can definitely go win some games, so um I don't wanna not I, I definitely voice it um, if uh, it don't happen for you next year, man. It's got to happen. I, let's let's get the IG three campaign back out there and go out there and help some of these young quarterbacks and help a team. You never know because you know at some point you might play, you might not. Exactly. Play. You just there to be served. Exactly. Just there to serve. And a lead, team, more so, a leader. and more so, I think a leader in the locker room. There's some young locker rooms out there, like I, for instance, Jordan Love. I don't know how about how you feel about going to Green Bay. But I think you being with Jordan Love, oh. you know, would certainly help Jordan Love in his development, 100%. And, you know, experience. So, you know, that those opportunities, that, that's 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 there, man. Yeah. That, that needs to happen. No, I, I appreciate that. And a guy like Jordan Love, they just need someone in the room that's been through it, uh, that's been through the ups yeah. and the downs, and then is also going to challenge yep. them. And I, I agree with you. Yep. Challenging a guy in practice is not – a threat. It's just letting him know every day you show yeah. up, you better show up ready to go. Otherwise you're going to get embarrassed. Yeah. And that's kind of how you have to approach it. But when you talk about teams needing help, a team that you play for needs a lot of help right now. So I'm going to ask it just cold, you know, point blank period. Are the Eagles soft? No, no, absolutely not, man. Um, Just going through the growing pains of, you know, um, the, the post Super Bowl, you know, all the, you know, what the feeling of that yep. and getting everybody's best on a weekly basis. Cause you know, after you win that Super Bowl, when, when you come into the stadium that next year, you the big bad Philadelphia Eagles or the big bad Kansas city chiefs yep. or the big bad bills, you come in and, and you know, everybody's out here playing for something, right. you know, for personal gain, financial gain, team interest, all these things play a factor. So, you know, you lose coordinators, yep. you know, you lose coaches, it make a difference, man. Sometimes you think you can just bounce back and and a lot of times, man, you you, you just gotta have, you know, 
things happen that, that go your way. You know what I'm saying? With this turnovers, injuries, like I think Slay was out last Yes, night. he was. That don't help. Don't you know, know what I mean? That don't help the situation. And we know the healthiest team is going to win in the That's end. That's true. Ain't gonna be there. That's true. So I, I I agree with you. I don't think that the Eagles are soft. I know a lot of people in in our industry right now are are taking liberties to try to take. I don't want to say take shots, but you know how it is. Some guys got to say certain things to to pop. Our fan base won't allow us to be soft. You can't. You be soft in Philly for one season. <laughs> You know what I mean? You can pack your bags, man. You about it there. The fan base is brother, and we love it too. That's how we are. So it ain't no soft, ain't no soft tissue over there. It might be a little scar tissue. There you go. Ain't no, ain't no soft tissue, tissue at all. Yeah. And, and I gotta say, yeah. the whole thing with Desai and Matt Patricia has been a a little odd to me. I mean, Matt Patricia has been yeah. an offensive coordinator and a defensive coordinator in one calendar year. I mean, yeah. that's one. That's that's. That's, that's yeah. variety right there. That's, you know, positional <laughs> versatility. I ain't yeah, never that's... seen nothing like that before. Jeez, Christ, man. <laughs> I mean, game changing. But when, exactly. He, he definitely game changing. But when you look at that Eagles yeah. defense and you got Fletcher Cox, you got Brandon Graham, and, and you have Shaq Leonard that they just brought in, and you got Darius Slay, and, and you've got uh, all these different pieces on that defensive line, Josh Sweat. Like, it's not a personnel problem with them. What do you think it is? We lost the deep coordinator. So, it, it, obviously, you know, with all these moving parts, you know, it, it's, it, it makes it difficult for the player sometimes. Um, sometimes the scheme don't fit the player. If it's a different scheme, if it might be the same scheme, a couple of different people. Um, you know, you got to look at it. Fletcher and, and, and Brandon, they're a little older, so they need the younger guys to, to get reps and fill in for the things that they, you know, can't really do as well as they used to, like, that's just the evolution of the game. And, you know, with age, you just, sometimes you are not as productive yeah. as you, you were when you was younger. I agree. So yeah. we just need more guys to step up. So, so Brandon and Fletcher can be, can be fresh right. come playoff time. Like we need that. And so we just need more guys to step up, man. The, the, these guys gave it everything they had and they won the Super Bowl years ago. And and they just got back to one. So, <laughs> you know, we just never know where their energy at, man. They, you know, I know Brandon. I talked to him in, in the offseason. We played a little golf, and he was just saying, you know, he was going to enjoy this year, yeah. man, and just try to get the most out of you know his production and try to, you know, he basically saying he hoped the young guys stepped up so yeah. you know he can make an impact late in the season. Yeah, it feels like the defensive line for the Eagles has to be the catalyst for everything. Like they just gotta, yeah, they, they, they are sure. playing well. Don't get me wrong; they're just not finishing on the quarterback like they were last year. But I was watching right. pregame warmups uh, on Monday Night Countdown, and I saw Fletcher Cox, Jalen Carter, and Jordan Davis. These are three of the biggest human beings I've ever seen in my life, <laughs> yeah, and they sure. are physical. So I feel like it's, it's yeah. the Jalen Carters and the Jordan Davises that maybe need to take the lead a little bit to help yeah. some of yeah. the – more seasoned guys be prepared for that playoff run. At least that's what it looks like to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. When we talk about teams being soft, um, the next question is about the Dallas Cowboys. At home, they're undefeated. On the road, they're 0-4. And it seems to me like when things get tough, they just fold, especially on the road. James Cook was out there tapping that ass this past week, ran for 179 yards. They ran the ball 49 times for 266 yards. I mean, I I hear Micah talking about how the media is just waiting for the Cowboys to fail, and I don't disagree with that. I don't partake in that, but I got to call a spade a spade, and they got bullied in this past game, and yeah. you can't be a championship team getting bullied like that on the road, especially when it looks like they're, they're not going to get uh, home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Uh, just what's your what's your feeling about the Cowboys right now? Yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't able to watch the game this week on my flight coming home. It was one of the Delta flights where they ain't had a live TV, and then my internet was all over the place, and I was just, like, frustrated. I just went to sleep. But I did see the score when I landed, and I was a little surprised and caught some highlights. And I was I was so proud of the Dallas Cowboys in terms of, like, how they was turning the corner. And, right. You know, it's, it's America's team, and, you know, with all due respect, um, you know, they drive the headlines. And so we pay more attention uh, to to what's happening with the Cowboys because they always, you know, at, at the forefront of of media, and, and you know they should feel good about that. It's great exposure for everybody, and you know 
a lot of these teams got expectations that other teams don't have. And I was really surprised to hear from everybody about how the Dallas Cowboys lost. Right. I only seen highlights. I got to go back and watch it. But personally, I didn't think that uh, they would lose that game. Yeah. I thought they were going to Buffalo and, and make one more statement. Yeah. That's all the expectations <laughs> with, with, with Micah, with Micah and what he said. Like, I, I feel what Micah's saying. You know, we've been in those shoes. Oh, y'all hating on us. Y'all just, yeah. y'all, don't want, y'all against us. Hey, Micah, little homie, bro. Like, man, it's going to always be that. You're going to always be singing that same song, bro. Yep. Like, don't, 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 don't buy into it, Micah. Just, man, play the game. Play the game. And keep doing you. Because they're going to, they're going to always come after you when, you know, when you have success, they go, they go, you know, we, like, we the media now. Exactly. So, and our job is this, you know, to, you know, respectfully point out some of the flaws and some of the things that we think can happen better. Now, I'm never going, and, and with the platforms that we have, I'm never going to beat a guy down about something he's not doing in a professional sport. It's a professional sport for a reason because the guy that you're going up against is a professional as well. He's training. And he's preparing mentally to stop you, just like you preparing. So the, the chess match thing is 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 realistic. So I, I just think it's times where we got to do better. It's times where if we want to achieve that that goal, we gotta we gotta be the game changer. So let, let's just keep it all in perspective, everybody, man. If you go, whoever gonna game change every week, you can come in and match. Yeah. But you might not, you might not win. When you come in and you beat Josh Allen and you change the course of that game, you, you, then you exactly. win. Exactly. So respectfully, man, we these been good games, man. This. I love it. I love it going down the stretch. Yeah, I think it's a couple of things. I think for Micah, you know, he's talking about uh, quarterback play, game changer versus game manager. Well, I think as a defensive end as well, the the same conversation can be had. Like when you think of game changers at defensive end or outside linebacker, it's sacks, it's yeah. sacks, it's sacks. Well, the, the yeah. game manager at defensive end outside linebacker plays the run. And I feel like that's what they yeah. got to kind of get back to is like fitting up the run and playing the run better because – with right. what the Bills did, the Bills showed you why no one in the AFC wants them in the playoffs because they're much yeah. better than their record says they are, and they just won a game without Josh Allen. He, he had 95 yards passing. For real? He had 95 yards passing. For real? <laughs> yeah, I, I said a couple of weeks ago, I said a couple of weeks ago on Fox, I was like, man, I, I just think this team is Josh Allen dependent at times. Exactly. And I, I said, I'm like, because when you think of Buffalo, you don't really think of a run game. Uh, it was great to hear that they ran for 200 yards. Yeah. Or I think Cook had a 200 yards from scrimmage or something. So that's got to be 150 on the ground and what have it came. But wow, man. I mean, that's yeah. it, Buffalo is really turning the corner. Yeah. And you know, you know, for Philly and turn the corner. For Philly and Dallas, it's almost the same thing, at least defensively. Like they need somebody, they've been punched in the mouth. They need somebody that's going to come out there and punch somebody in the mouth. So maybe Draymond Green should play defense yeah. for both of them. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Draymond. Draymond. What's up, Draymond? I'll let your boy, man. Get right, baby. Get right. Get right. He'll be back. Yeah, he'll he'll, he'll be, be, back. be back. But if you need somebody to go out there and wild well, out Dr- for Draymond you. Draymond certainly got some time to think. Draymond going to wild out for you now. Draymond got some time to think. Everybody needed a break. <laughs> they, need all, they all needed a break right now from one another. So Draymond to come back with a new attitude. No doubt about it. So before I let you go, I got to jump into this conversation with you about Sean Payton. Did you see what happened with him and yeah, Russell Wilson? It. Okay. I'm going to ask you the question first. What did you think about that encounter on the sideline uh, between Russell and Sean Payton? Because I've never seen uh, somebody, you know, just kind of jump, you know, all in Russell's face and, and give it to him like that. Um, it feels like with Coach Payton and working with him uh, last year, you know, and, you know, getting to know him and he's, He's a great man. Right. Um, it, it seemed like you, you something had to happen in order for him to, to lose it like that. Uh, we'll never know. Right. Um, I wouldn't even care to ask. <laughs> uh, I was just trying to. I was just trying to interpret. Just like trying to figure out like what could have happened in those two plays where um, it, it caused a, a, a blow up on the sideline. Right. And, and I respect the way Russ took that. I, I do too. Think a lot of us, you know, have to accept. You know what our coaches' feelings are. They put a lot of hard work into make trying to make sure that we prepare. Correct. And you know, so I respect Russell for um, not making that 
you know, a, a whole thing on the side right. and, and, and creating even more turmoil um, that, that might already be lingering. So um, respect to him, respect the coach for having the guts to do that um, in front of everybody. And now, you know, it shows that, you know, coach, he's he not, he not playing around, man. Right. Like, he's trying to turn this thing around. And that goes for any player um, on that roster. Nobody's safe. Coach, gonna, he, he going to get in your ass. He told us that he was going to right. He told us he was going to be that type of coach. So that's not surprising me. And sometimes we need that. Yeah, I would say I disagree with the premise of the need for it. Um, for for yeah. me, with Russell and Sean Payton, uh, they asked Sean after the game, "What? Why did he yell at Russell like that?" And he's and Sean said, "Well, whatever I talk with Russell about ain't none of your business." And I don't disagree with that. I I, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah, yeah. What? That's coach. Sean Payton, as a coach, if you don't want people to ask that question, then you can't do that to your quarterback on the sideline. And and the only That's the true, only true. reason I feel that That's way true, true. is because this is like the second or third iteration of Sean Payton doing something to Russell to me that makes it seem like that's not his guy. So yeah. to your point, sometimes a coach will get on somebody because uh, the quarterback in particular because he yeah. wants to show the rest of the team like, hey, I'm not playing favorites. I'm gonna get on everybody. Right. In that moment, it didn't feel like that. To me, that moment said, uh, you're not my guy. I don't respect you. Uh, I don't like you. Whatever it may be, he embarrassed his quarterback on the sideline. And now the rest of the team, in my opinion, is more so looking at that moment like, damn, Sean Payton really don't rock with Russell Wilson. And I thought Russell handled it perfectly. It's in. It's within his personality to not react in those moments. Yeah, yeah. But I thought he handled it perfectly because now it's a not. It's essentially after this conversation between me and you, it's a non-story. But I yeah. do feel like Sean Payton should come out in the media publicly and apologize to Russell Wilson, not because yeah. he's been, you know he's a head coach and you're head coach you can do whatever you want, but he's got to show solidarity in this playoff push that he's got his quarterbacks back. And I don't think he did that yeah. in that moment. What do you think? And, you know, on the flip side, Russ could have – he could have had something to say too. Like, hey, Coach, don't, don't don't talk to me like that in front of everybody. Exactly. Like, you know what I'm saying? The fact that Russ took it, I was like, damn. You know, <laughs> that interpretation is – and Russ really did something exactly. wrong. Right, something. right. So, I, so your point, him coming out and saying – or talking about what happened, I would have – see, these grown man situations. Exactly. These grown man situations, exactly. you're looking at a, a 30, 34 year old man with a family and a coach who's, you know, pretty much your leader yep. and your mentor in a sense and your teacher. And, and we we really got to hash this out. This It's a moment. Yeah. And, and it happens. Yeah. I had a couple, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was going to say, have, so, have you ever had a coach you know, yell at you like that on the sideline? Um. In practice, oh, yeah, yes. but not in a game, not with um, not with millions of people watching. Yeah, but and then man, Dan Reeves, man, Dan got into it one time um, for the, all the right reasons. Right. You know, so much respect for Coach Reeves, rest in peace, Dan. Um, I had to tell Coach one time, "Hey, Coach, call the plays for me the same way you calling them for Dan." <laughs> coach, like, look, so this is me, this 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 my little my little jogging. I'm coming in to just chill, Coach. Coach said, what? Right. I said it again, real calm. Coach lost his mind, and I kind of lost mine. The only thing I said was just, Coach, start calling the plays the right way. We ripped off eight straight. But it wasn't because I did something wrong. I, like I say, man, I don't know what happened in that moment, man. I wish I, I wish I knew now just so we could have a better, you know, understanding or we can break it down a little different right. to, to the audience who deserve to know like why you see a professional coach and a professional player. Cause you don't really see no, that. You really don't. But uh, yeah. Now nah, hit these quickly before you bounce. Um, yeah. Go ahead. Who is your top five current quarterbacks in the NFL? Top five, man. I got there. I really got a list of top, uh, probably top tens, but um, you know, I got to put Lamar in there. Yeah. Josh Allen, yeah. Brock Purdy. 100%. Jalen, still in my top five. I like it. I like it. Dak in my top okay, five. Okay, I see you. I feel like I'm missing a couple. That's five, but, you know, there's uh, – Who else? There's also Mahomes. 
Oh shit, I forgot I was about to <laughs> Kadarius Tony got you forgetting about yeah, my own <laughs> Yeah, see, see when 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 you ask me my top of anything, I'm instantly going with who got the better record. Oh, I see you. I, I see you. I see you. Yeah. Cause yeah, that's how I do mine. Cause that that that's gonna fluctuate from week to week. Hundred percent. If you ask me, my top five guys. Oh, who winning? <laughs> oh yeah. All right. So I take I take uh, Patrick just won last week. I take I take Jaden. I'll put Patrick okay. in. So Jaden at five. Okay. So for you of the guys that are, uh, you know, just getting started, who, who's who's the one that is up next that you think next year will be constantly in that conversation? CJ Stroud for sure. 100%. With a little more uh, experience. Yep. And getting a feel for, cause you know what that that year one, the year two jump is like. Like that, the game slowed down for me tremendously mm-hmm. in year two. It was like it felt like college all over again. So that comfort level is gonna be there with him. Um, I'm excited to see what Anthony Richardson Ooh. do in Shane Steichen's yeah. offense. Um, the fact that Ghana Minshew is out there running that really well, he got to be sitting back looking at that. And you know, saying to my, I can't ooh, wait to get licking this shot. I can't wait on, to get baby. back because ooh, this <laughs> offense is sweet, and that's the same offense that Jalen was running yeah. a couple of years that's ago. True. So it's a successful formula. So I mean, he, he got to be itching to get back out there. So I'm gonna be watching that real close um, going into next year, and still seeing how guys like you know Dak and 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 Josh Allen right. start to make that push coming into not the latter years, but they in that phase where you know, five, six, seven, eight years in, it's like it's it's crunch time to, to chase that championship. And it can happen at any time for a quarterback, but I, I think the NFL is in really good hands with the quarterback play that we got right no now. No doubt about it. And you know who else is in really good hands? It's the Madden franchise. So you're going to be or you're on the cover of Madden 24 season three. Yeah. And that's the, I guess it's the first time in 20 years since you've since you've been on there. Yeah, 20 years to celebrate the 20 year anniversary of, you know, grace in the game. You know, they have been labeled the GOAT now. You have. You, you are. Uh, it's okay. You are. You know, the, the greatest of all time. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we was just celebrating that, man, on the season, th- uh, season three running back, man, 2024, just having fun, man. We streaming and having fun with it and just going to keep, you know, building the, the platform. We play Madden all the time yep. anyway. So we was like, look, man, let's do something special, man. Honor the great John Madden because um, – you know, he commentated a, a lot of my games, especially in the beginning of my career. Had nothing but amazing things to say about, you know, where I was and uh, what the game was headed and what I could mean to the game of football. Um, put me on the cover in 03 and, uh, you know, 20 years later, still celebrating, you know, the greatness of John Madden in the game for sure. Well, Mike, I got to say, uh, you changed the game of football. You changed the game of Madden, and you changed the lives of every kid like myself who played that 2003 Madden video game because yeah. we all wanted to be like Mike, and we weren't talking about Michael Jordan in that instance. So, just want to give you your flowers. No you know Thanks, why man. you're still here and why we have an opportunity because appreciate you it. certainly deserve it. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the show, my guy, having a great conversation, and uh, don't yeah. let anybody tell you anything different. You are a legend, and I know you have said otherwise in the past, but I do believe you're a Hall of Famer, my guy. Thank you, man. That means a lot. All right, people, that's a wrap for episode 14 of RG3 and the Ones. I want to give a huge shout-out to Michael Vick for coming on the show and having a great conversation. Hopefully you heard at least one thing that you can apply to your own life, and it'll help you become the one in that bad boy as well. So make sure you guys like and subscribe to our YouTube page. We're going to be dropping some knowledge and some game on you guys every single day as we get geared up to those episodes that are going to drop on Thursdays. So make sure you follow us on social media at RG3 and the Ones again follow us on social media at rg3 and the ones like and subscribe to our youtube page so we can keep having fun with this bad boy once again rg3 and the ones is a wave sports and entertainment original presented by prize picks and it wouldn't be made possible without all my producers that are on the team and whispering oaks production so want to say a huge shout out to them not only for doing all the things that they do but having to deal with me every single day So before I let you guys go, I always want to drop some knowledge on you. So the knowledge I got for you this week is Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. 
I know that all of us can at times have some struggles that we go through in life, but that's why we have family. That's why we have friends. Make sure you lean on them and make sure you tell them how much you appreciate them while you still can. Enjoy this holiday season and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Peace out.